Steve Nelson to come and play vibes. I got John Bird to come and play bass. Hank played piano, I played drums. And um, the saxophone player <coughs> is now the director of the jazz program at Rutgers where I used to teach. I taught at Rutgers for almost seven years before I came over here to take this job at the Hoke Shoe in Cologne. Mm -hmm. Very fine saxophone player. Um, and we went in and we hit. And the same thing, we only rehearsed a little bit. One rehearsal a day to gig at the, at, the, at the Blue Note, but the guys could all read good. And uh, James Williams gave us some extra original tunes that he wrote that he wanted to try and play. And Hank brought some tunes, but he didn't have anything orchestrated for quintet because mm -hmm. it was saxophone, vibes, piano, bass, and drums. Mm -hmm. But we hit and we hit hard. Good. We hit very hard. <laughs> so Hank, how did the opposite band do? Hank, they did good. <laughs> Elvin was strong, but I think towards the end, Elvin was getting a little tired because I wasn't lightening up. I was playing everything I knew. <laughs> and Elvin, I mean, uh, Hank was giving me a lot of solo space. <laughs> I said, oh, man, I don't need all the solo space opposite Elvin. But anyway, at the end of the week, Ted Kirsten came up to me and said, you know, you should have been a little bit more respectful of Elvin. You shouldn't have been playing so much and playing so strong. You made him work too hard. I said, man, that's the craziest shit I ever heard in my life. Here I'm up here trying to play with Hank's brother, and he's telling me to play everything I got. And you telling me, I said, Elvin is one of my idols, yeah, just like sure. Art Blakey was one of my idols. And I'm scared to death up here to be playing opposite him. I'm going to give everything I got. Mm -hmm. And you telling me I should lighten up on Elvin? Elvin ain't lightening up on me. <laughs> I'm going to give him everything I got. <laughs> you were right. And I did. Yeah. But that's what Ted Kirsten said to me. I should be. Be more respectful of lighting up on trying to play. I said, man, well, what when am I gonna mean? when am I gonna ever get a chance to play opposite Elvin again That's for fourteen I sets? I mean, what could be more respectful and do what you can? Do what you can do. Yeah. He's not lightening up on me. <laughs> but that by the end of that last set Sunday night, I could tell he was getting a little tired because he was trying to blow me away. <laughs> And I wasn't going to let him just like run a, me out of town. Like because I had seen him play opposite other groups when they had a double bill with Elvin's band. And most of the drummers were so intimidated by Elvin, they were afraid to take fours. Of course. They didn't want to play nothing. Yeah. And that's what Hank didn't want. Yeah. yeah. Hank said. Yeah. I ain't going to hire no boy to do no man's job. <laughs> well, he had him in the band for so many years. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that was, that was a memorable experience. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. I survived 14 sets opposite Elvin. <laughs> well, you survived the North Pole before, right? And I survived the so North Pole. After that? I could survive anything. <laughs> right. Exactly.